I survived the scorpion scenario. He said, I'm very lucky, which is very triggering to me. The flies are really buzzing around me today and I'm beginning to take it personally. You'd have to put me to put me out of my misery. You'd have to hit, bonk me on the head with a shovel. Yeah, ladies, you know what? Be your natural human self, guaranteed the male is gonna love it because then he can be his true authentic self and when you're both your true authentic selves, you're just having a great time, just like we are. We're having a great time. That is much bigger than I expected. That's what she said. <laughs> no, it's not a time to joke. Such a perm. Brian just came into my van and said he found a rattlesnake. Neither one of us have ever seen a rattlesnake out in the wild, so we're gonna go check it out. So, regretting this decision. Are we there? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. It's going to be okay. It's literally just trying to chill. If you're chill, it's chill. My, I'm not chill. Oh. I have zero chill. Yeah, well, come stand behind me again. I'll take, I'll take a bite for you. Get it? No. I don't. It's right there in the light. I don't see it. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that amazing? I'm looking right, it's like right there. Oh my gosh, it's huge! Fuck! <laughs> Fuck. Oh. That is much bigger than I expected. That's what she said. <laughs> no, it's not a time to joke.
I hate it. We're fine. It doesn't want to hurt us. It doesn't. Holy cow, that is thick. That is a big... It's as, it's as thick as my wrist, for sure. I think it's huge. That's a six-footer. What? I guarantee I think it's six feet long. Maybe five. I hate this. Now you've got the creepy crawlies, like, they're probably everywhere. Ooh, I can see its eyeball. Does it look like the devil? Do you describe its personality? Very, very calm. Oh, I don't like anything about this. I don't recommend rattlesnake chasing. I don't. We're not chasing, we're observing. I don't recommend it. It's amazing how one day we can just be walking around the desert being like, whatever, no big deal, we're safe as clams. And then the next, bam, there could be a snake anywhere. Ignorance is bliss. And I'm safe. Gosh dang it, this is exactly where we're at. <laughs> Lizard, we come in peace. Oh, I don't like. Just back up and go around that way. I don't like the desert so much right now. Do you see how it sticks in you? Ow! Little piece of... Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, buddy. You're the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> to burn some of my cardboard before we leave camp tomorrow. Ranger started his day today with a cactus in his paw. I didn't even notice. Normally he just like stays put wherever he is when it happens and I have to come rescue him. This time he came all the way back in the van, went in his kennel, sat under the hammock, was just acting really, really meek. And so I sat down and had to pry big spikes out of his paw. Like I always am. Psych.
often question the temperatures of living in a van in the desert in the sun all the time. It is starting to hit springtime around here, which means temperatures are rising. But I want to show you quickly the difference this separating wall makes between the cab and the house. I've had it shut all day. This is the temperature in the cab. It's 102, you can see at the bottom here. And this is the temperature in the house, 81. It is normally about 20 degrees different, um, both when it's hot outside and when it's cold outside. It stays warmer in the van when it's cold, it stays cooler in the van when it's hot. So if you insulate well, if you put in a wall, if you keep your windows open and the fans on, you will be just fine update. I was just in a meeting. I typically prop my phone up here against my water, but as you can see, it was in the sun and so it overheated in the middle of my meeting. This is the solution. <laughs> oh, hi buddy. My bosses said, hey B, this is a non-work message. Are you doing okay? Heart emoji. That's so nice. I love it when people ask me those questions. I feel good. I think I'm doing great. Remember to ask people how they're doing. Are you doing okay? <laughs> you have eye boobs, you nasty. So Brian and I just started uh, discussing the definition of the word luck because he said I'm very lucky, which is very triggering to me. I do not consider myself lucky in my successes. I am very lucky as in I was like, I'm a white person born in a first world country. I have a lot of luck that I did had nothing to do with. Like I did not do anything. That's the roll of dice, got lucky. For stuff that I am successful in, that is not luck. That is drive, that is intelligence, that is work. That word for some reason has always triggered me well, because I think it really diminishes the person who's done hard work. I'm just reading from the definition. It says by chance with you not having a single thing to do about it. If you find a hundred dollar bill in the road, you're lucky. You did nothing for that. Yeah, and I think a lot of people just use it wrong. Like, oh, you lucked into van life. It's like, no, I actually did something about it. Yeah. I took action. We put in work to be living okay, like this. Now. We bought the vehicle, we took the dive, we got rid of our belongings, we I built the thing. That's not luck. I stand highly corrected. <gasps> Thanks. Conversations with Brenda and Brian. They quickly escalate into very interesting discussions. What do you think? What's the right word that I'm looking for? When somebody is, yes, in like right place, right time, but also puts an effort and energy in their talent and their brains into something. It's not just chance. What is that word? We're currently trying to get video of these kangaroo mice that are in the bush right next to Brian's van. He's got his camera and a light all set up. It's so exciting. Oh, there's one. There's another one. Scare him away, get out of here. Buddy, Jeez, this is so cool. I want to pet him. And also, I really hope they stay far away from our van. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, he was just under your van. <laughs> I love that you're using binoculars. I can see them. Oh, oh there, there he is. is. Jinx. Ah. Oh. Oh, they're cool, man. They look so soft. Yeah. I would rub that on my face. They got a cool little world out here. These like they have these like th these are their homes. These little islands. It's wild. He's just like Ranger. Oh, <gasps> whoa! That was a full-on brawl. Oh, I missed it. I was looking through these stupid. Oh. Things. Do they like each other? I don't know, man. That other guy probably slept with this girl or something. Oh. Whoa! Oh, jumper. He went away as soon as I got the binoculars out. Little turd. He does make little turds. <laughs> this is probably one of the greatest nights of my van life. <laughs> Watching mice. This is well with you too, though. Oh like, yeah. We're both here laughing, and this is funny, and we're oh. oh! Whoa! <laughs> <Dude. laughs> 
Yo, that one comes like, out of his home like, dude, get off my porch. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna review some footage. All right, happy Thursday. I have decided to take today off work to go. <laughs> YouTube life. <laughs> you go first. No, but for real, I took today off work. We're going hiking. Are you in it? Yeah. Get some vitamin D on the old skin bag and. Ranger's driving. Ranger's allowed to come. She's in the driver's seat. Ready to drive. Planet Fitness shower. It's the first shower I've had in 11 days, I believe. Filling up the old water tank in <laughs> copper and what else? We need to find somewhere to dump our trash. Trash and so, maybe grocery shopping. Mm, average chore day in the life of a van. Let's go. Let's go. YouTubers do. All right, part two of travel stories with Brenda. This is the Guatemala edition. When I was in Guatemala, when I was 14, maybe? I think it was my sophomore year of high school on a mission trip. This was with all of my high school classmates, so probably 20 or 30 kids. We had an outdoor shower. There could be a scorpion in there. Speaking of scorpions, there was wooden planks as the flooring in the shower, and all of a sudden, naked as a jaybird, uh, <laughs> a scorpion came out from under the planks and stung my foot in the middle of the middle of nowhere Guatemala. And I freaked out. I went running in front of all of them in my towel. All the guys in my class were trying to scare me and tell me that I only had like an hour left to live and the hospital was four hours away and so I was panicking jerks. And luckily a uh, resident just up the street had an anti-venom pill or something, or anti-venom, anti, I don't even know what it is for scorpions, but some sort of pill that I was able to take so I didn't die. But, oh bunny! <gasps> oh! Dude. Anyways, I survived. I made it back. Cool story, bro. Cool story. <laughs> he sound like not good though. All right. Yeah, All right. All right. Yeah, slip it up. Oh. I'm ready for EGs and a Dr. Pepper. Slavery dog. 
All right, we decided this desert is a little anticlimactic because we can't actually get up in the hills. So, burgers are calling us in milkshakes. <gasps> Oh my gosh, was that in our fire? Yo. <laughs> I think that was uh, a firework right there. <gasps> oh my gosh. There's bullets in there for all we know. 